In this lesson, we are going to discuss more examples of proofs. In particular, we will be discussing the proof of the division algorithm. We have already seen this theorem in our previous video lectures, except that I did not give you the proof of this one. In order to understand the proof of the division algorithm, we have to understand what the well-ordering principle is. The well-ordering principle states that every non-empty subset of the set of non-negative integers has a least element. This is an axiom, so therefore, it does not require any proof. It is already accepted to be true. Now, for example, I have the set of 2, 4, 7... 8, 9, and so on. And these are all non-negative integers. And of course, this is non-empty. S contains a least element. And what is that least element? That least element is 2. So take note that for the well-ordering principle to work, the set has to be non-empty. And of course, it is a subset of non-negative integers. So it has to satisfy two properties. It should be non-empty and it should only contain non-negative integers. Let us look at the conditions in the division algorithm. Here, n and m are integers with m being strictly greater than zero. Take note here that n can be positive and n can be negative. Here, there exist unique integers k and r such that n is equal to mk plus r with r between 0 to m, strictly less than m. The proof of this theorem contains two parts, the existence part and the uniqueness part of the integers k and r. In order to establish the existence of k and r, we will be considering this set. S is the set of all numbers of the form n minus mt, where t is an integer, and n minus mt should be strictly greater than or equal to 0. We will use the well-ordering principle to show that s has a least element. In order to understand this, let us get specific examples for n and m. So for example, our n is equal to 7 and m is equal to I have some values of t here from negative 4 to 4, and here are the values of 7 minus 2t. So take note that what will be the elements in our set S? The set S will be everything here, 7 minus 2t, and what do we want? We want the elements to be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, our S here contains these numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. And therefore, S is non-empty and it only contains non-negative integers. So therefore, here the least element is 1. If we will now look at this column here, what is that specific T for you to obtain 7 minus 2 to be equal to 1? We have T equals 3. Take note that this will be our choice of k and this will be our r. That is, 7 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 1. Here's another example. Suppose that n is equal to negative 4 and m is equal to 3. So again, I have some of the values of t here and the corresponding values of negative 4 minus 3t. What will be the elements of our set S? So it has to be non-negative. So we will start with this one, 2, 5, 8, and so on. And then you just add 3 everywhere, 8, 11, 14, and so on. And therefore, the least element is 2. And therefore, it only means that this will be our choice of k and r. This is my k and this 2 here is going to be my r. That is, negative 4 is equal to 3 times negative 2 plus 2. 
In our two simulations here, we have seen that the smallest element of S will correspond to the remainder and the corresponding T there will be your K. That will be the quotient. So let us now proceed with the proof of the division algorithm. Take note that we start with let n and m be integers with m is greater than 0 because that is one of the hypotheses of our proof. We want to establish the existence of k and r. We now set s to be equal to the set of all elements of this form n minus mt where t is an integer and n minus mt has to be greater than or equal to 0. We will show that S contains a smallest element using the well ordering principle. Now take note that N is just an integer here. So therefore, I will divide it into two cases. Case 1, N is greater than or equal to 0. And for the second case, N is less than 0. For S to satisfy the conditions in the well ordering principle, we have to show first that S is non-empty. And to show that a set is non-empty, all we have to do is to show that it contains at least one element. So let us proceed by proof by cases. For the first case, suppose that n is greater than or equal to 0. What would be an element in the set S? If we take our t to be equal to 0, Take note that we have n minus mt will be equal to n minus m times 0, which is equal to n. And therefore, what can you say about n? It can be written in this form, n minus m times something. Therefore, n is an element of s. Why is it an element of s? Because n is greater than or equal to 0. It satisfies this part. Hence, n is in S. And therefore, S is non-empty for the case when n is greater than or equal to 0. What about when n is less than 0? We have to show an element of S. What do you think is that? So for this, we will take t be equal to n. So that our n minus mt is equal to n minus mn, which is equal to n times quantity 1 minus m. What can you say about n times 1 minus m? Here is where we will use the fact that m is strictly greater than 0 and m is an integer. Since m is an integer, with m being strictly greater than 0, m is greater than or equal to 1. And therefore, 1 minus m is less than or equal to 0. But n here is less than 0 also. n is less than 0. 1 minus m is less than or equal to 0. So therefore, what can you say about n times 1 minus m? This is greater than or equal to 0. So thus, n times 1 minus m is greater than or equal to 0. And so, it is an element of S. Why is it an element of S? It is of this form, n minus mt, and it is greater than or equal to 0. So in both cases, we have shown that S is non empty. What is the second condition in the well ordering principle? The elements of the set have to be non-negative integers only. And of course that part is covered because we want n minus mt to be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore our s contains a smallest element by the well ordering principle. So we have hence s contains a smallest element say r. Thus, r, since it is an element of s, it is n minus mk for some integer k. 
Next, we will show that this R is less than M because here in the division algorithm, we want that R is greater than or equal to zero but less than M. In order to show that R is less than M, we will proceed by contradiction. Suppose, on the contrary, that r is greater than or equal to m. We now substitute this r equals n minus mk on this inequality. We have n minus mk greater than or equal to m, which means that when we subtract m to both sides, we get that n minus mk minus m is greater than or equal to 0. And therefore, we can write this as n minus m times k plus 1. This is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, look at the form of this one. We have n minus m times an integer k plus 1 is an integer because k is an integer so therefore what can you now say about this n minus m times k plus 1 is an element of s moreover since m is positive that is one of our assumptions m is positive n minus m times k plus 1. This is equal to that thing over there, n minus mk minus m. And this is strictly less than n minus mk, right? Because m is positive. And what is this saying here? n minus m times k plus 1 is strictly less than n minus mk. And what is this n minus mk? This is our element r. So thus, n minus m times quantity k plus 1 is an element of s which is smaller than r. And this is a contradiction. It contradicts the fact that r is the smallest element of s. Since we were able to arrive at a contradiction, R must be strictly less than M. We are now done with the existence of K and R. We will now go to the second part and that is we want to prove the uniqueness of K and R. How do you prove uniqueness? We will suppose that there exist integers k1, k2, r1, and r2 such that they satisfy the requirement that n is equal to m times k1 plus r1 and the same is true for k2 and r2 and r1 and r2 are greater than or equal to 0 and less than m. What do we want to show? We want to show that k1 must be equal to k2 and r1 must be equal to r2. Now, without loss of generality, when I write WLOG, this means without loss of generality, we will assume that R2 is greater than or equal to R1. Why are we using this one without loss of generality? Because if it so happens that R1 is greater than or equal to R2, then you just interchange the names. Now, from this equation over here, let's call this equation 2. We can equate these two expressions, mk1 plus r1 is equal to mk2 plus r2. And I will put mk2 on the other side. So we have mk1 minus mk2 is equal to r2 minus r1. I can factor out the m here. And therefore, what is this saying? k1 and k2, remember, are integers. So we have m times an integer equals r2 minus r1. So this is saying that 
m divides r2 minus r1. However, we have this condition that both r1 and r2 are less than m. So therefore, r2 minus r1, this is greater than or equal to 0 because r2 is greater than or equal to r1. And r2 minus r1 is less than or equal to r2 because r1 is greater than or equal to 0. But r2 is strictly less than m. So what is that? Is it possible for m to divide a non-zero integer which is smaller than it? The only way for m to divide a number smaller than it is for that number to be equal to 0. So thus we have that r2 minus r1 is equal to 0 and so r1 is equal to r2. Now, if we plug this in equation 3, we get that m times k1 minus k2 is equal to 0, but m is not equal to 0. Our assumption here is that m is strictly greater than 0. So we say here that since m is not equal to 0, the only way for this product to be equal to 0 is for k1 minus k2 to be equal to 0. we're able to show that r1 is equal to r2 and k1 is equal to k2. That proves the uniqueness of our integers k and r. Let us have a quick application of the division algorithm. Let us find integers k and r such that n is equal to mk plus r, where n is equal to 78 and m is equal to 17. Now, for the case where n and m are both positive, it's easy to determine k and r. All you have to do is to divide 78 by 17, get the quotient and the remainder. And therefore, we get here that 78 is equal to 17 times 4 plus 10. What about if n is equal to negative 78? Now, when you divide this negative 78 you will have a negative remainder right because it will just come from here if you multiply negative 1 on both sides you get 17 times negative 4 minus 10 however we do not want this to be the remainder because the remainder has to be greater than or equal to 0 so what is the trick here remember that your r should be strictly less than m. Our m here is 17, so the strategy is to always add m. And then, of course, you have to subtract m as well. Because when you add m, this will definitely be less than m. So, therefore, this is 17 times negative 4. You have another negative 17 here. So, this becomes 17 times negative 5 and then plus 7. So, that takes care of this part over here when n is negative 78. Now for numbers 3 and 4, take note here that m is negative. But in our division algorithm, we have the condition here that m is strictly positive. Will the division algorithm work when m is negative? So let us just try this specific example so that we can generalize it when m is negative. Take note that for this case, n equals 78 and m is equal to negative 17. All I need to do is to use this one. I will write 78 as my m is negative 17. So therefore, I will just take my quotient k to be equal to negative 4. So therefore, my k is negative 4 and my r is 10. What about when both m and n are negative here? So I will have negative 78. I will now use this part when n is negative 78 and m is positive 17. So here I have 17 times negative 5. So how will I write that? I will just 
make this negative 17 times 5. And then I still have the same remainder, 7. So therefore, what happened in numbers 3 and 4? All we did was to replace k in the original k here by negative k. And same goes with this. Because before, in this case, our k is negative 5. But now, it will become 5. So here we replace k by negative k. Let us now generalize the division algorithm with m being less than 0. So again, we start with let n and m be integers with m less than 0. If I want to use this, it is just saying that the divisor, remember this is the divisor, the divisor has to be positive. So if I want the divisor to be positive, that's negative m. So since negative m is positive, what I will do is I will divide n by negative m. By the division algorithm, the first that we were able to prove, there exist integers. I will not call them k and r because you might be confused. I will just call them uh, t and s such that n is equal to negative m and t is the quotient plus s where s is greater than or equal to zero less than negative m. Remember, negative m is positive. However, what is our goal? We want to write n as m times something plus a remainder where that remainder is also between 0 to negative m. But what will we do? Just like what we did with this particular example, all we have to do is to write negative m times t as m times negative t. So therefore, we now have that our k is negative t and our r is s. So we have shown n is equal to mk plus r. We were able to show that even if m is a negative number, we can still write an integer n as m times an integer plus a remainder, but that remainder has to be, what is this negative m here? Our r now is between 0, but strictly less than the absolute value of m. We now have this absolute value part because m can now be equal to a negative number. We now have this general division algorithm. So here n and m are just any integers. The only restriction is of course m has to be non-zero. There exist unique integers k and r such that n is equal to mk plus r with r being greater than or equal to zero but strictly less than the absolute value of m. Let us have a few applications of the division algorithm. First, let us consider this. Let t be an odd prime. Prove that t is of the form 4k plus 1 or 4k plus 3 for some non-negative integer k. Let us first strategize before proceeding with the proof. Our only hypothesis here is that t is an odd prime. We want to show that it's either this or this. By the division algorithm, what are we doing here? We are dividing t by 4. So by the division algorithm, t is either equal to 4k or 4k plus 1 or 4k plus 2 up to 4k plus 3. Can p be equal to 4k? This will mean that 4 divides P. That cannot happen because P is a prime number. How about this one? Can P be equal to 4K plus 2? No. This would mean that P is equal to 2 times 2K plus 1, which would mean that P is even. That cannot happen because P is an odd prime. Since we were able to eliminate the case that p is equal to 4k and p is equal to 4k plus 3, we are only left with 
t equals 4k plus 1 or 4k plus 3. Why is it true that k is not negative here? It's because p is positive. Since p is positive, k has to be positive here. Let us now start with the formal proof. We start with our hypothesis, let p be an odd prime. By the division algorithm, p is either one of the following. Next, we will show that p cannot be equal to 4k and p cannot be equal to 4k plus 2. If p is equal to 4k, then 4 would divide p and this contradicts the fact that p is prime. So therefore, p cannot be equal to 4k. If p is equal to 4k plus 2, then p is divisible by 2. This cannot happen because p is odd. Since we have eliminated p equals 4k and p equals 4k plus 2, p is either equal to 4k plus 1 or p is equal to 4k plus 3. Take note that it can really happen that p is of the form 4k plus 1. For example, if p is equal to 5, that is 4 times 1 plus 1. And if p is equal to 7, that is equal to 4 times 1 plus 3. For our last example, let us show that for any integer m, 1 of m, m plus 4, m plus 8, m plus 12, m plus 16 is a multiple of 5. So first, let us strategize. m will either be of this form, 5k, 5k plus 1, 5k plus 2 up to 5k plus 4 because the possible remainders are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If m is equal to 5k, then m is already a multiple of 5. What about if m is equal to 5k plus 1? Which among these 5 integers will be a multiple of 5? That would be, this is 5k plus 1, so it will be m plus 4. This is 5k plus 5. That would be a multiple of 5. What about if m is equal to 5k plus 2? We want this to be a multiple of 5. So therefore, we want this to be plus 8, right? That is 5k plus 2 plus 8. So that's 5k plus 10. What about if we have 5k plus 3? It would be m plus 12. That would be 5k plus 15. And lastly, if m is equal to 5k plus 4, this would be m plus 16. We have 5k plus 20. For all of these cases, they would be multiples of 5. For the formal proof, that will be left as an exercise.